Hey, it's Cody Nelson here with Cover Crop Kings. And just out here, everybody's asking about the 44 inch corn. So we always talk about the 60, but how about this 44 inch stuff? So I wanted to come out here. We're in Starbuck, or just outside of Starbuck, Minnesota. And I wanted to show you some of this corn. So uh, first off, let's look at the ears on this stuff. Um, it is filled out. Um, we're expecting uh, some of the some of the stuff around here was chopped. Some of the other 44 inch corn was chopped, and it looks like uh, we're going to be at about 190 bushel. Um, so, anyways, it's working. Um, now, a little bit about the ground: 90 or 190 bushel corn in this area is is pretty good. Uh, this is all 100% no-till. Uh, it's following wheat. Where where with a diverse cover crop, the cover crop had some stuff that overwintered in it. It had some hairy vetch, uh, red clover, along with winter rye and triticale, and then planted this uh, 44 inch corn directly into that. And so this is this is what we have. So, um, anyways, we've got a diverse blend out here. You can see there's there's hairy vetch. There's some purple top turnips. There was some rape. Uh, there's lentils out here, I believe. Um, there was annual rye grass. There's winter cereal rye. There was, uh, I take that back. There was not winter cereal rye. So what we're gonna do here, we're actually gonna broadcast uh, some winter cereal rye pre-grazing and see how that works out. So we really wanted to get our diversity in early and then uh, come back later on um, with with that rye so we can plant soybeans into that rye. So as you can see this deal is working out pretty well uh, We're gonna see a lot more of this. I think as as time moves forward We just this gives us a whole nother opportunity to add a lot of this very powerful diversity uh, This is gonna help us Generate some of these nutrients and, and improve some of the nutrient cycling that we're seeing on these farms uh, This is gonna help you know if you're if you're on the clean water side This is surely gonna help um, hold these ex any excess nutrients in place uh, from what we're cycling and capturing and making it available for the next cash crop. We're, we're holding soil in place. We're, we're giving us the ability, these cover crops are really gonna give us the ability to do less tillage. And that's really what it's all about is trying to do, uh, improve the environment while we're also improving their bottom line. And, and ultimately we can't just grow cover crops just cause it's fun or just cause it's cool. Uh, we need to do it because it makes sense. And, and what we're finding out is when we can utilize cover crops to give us the, the ability to no-till uh, or practice reduced till, it, it really starts to generate uh, a profit on that. And then in this situation, you know, they're, they're actually gonna bring uh, somebody else's cows in here and, and graze these cover crops off. So um, that, that, and not graze it to the ground, you know, they'll still manage it, but, but that, that way they're gonna have uh, the ability to even do in, in, even more uh, nutrient cycling uh, run, by running these covers through the cows and the crop residues through the cows. So uh, some, some major advantages here. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this does actually yield out. But as you can see, uh, we, think, we think we're gonna be okay. So a little bit of hairy vetch climbing a little bit, but, but not enough to really uh, be an issue. So just wanted to show you, walk down here and, and show you what some of these other covers uh, look like and and just prove that hey, it's not just a, a single row that looks like this uh, You can tell I saw earlier. There was some there was some, looked like some of the wheat that regrew and it actually kind of died off But we still got a little bit of residue, but we're really starting to stimulate that biological activity um, We're uh, we do not expect next year. We, we expect this rye to come up and we'll plant beans directly into that and we'll be, you know, so the last time this was tilled was ahead of the wheat and we're now in a no-till system. So this is not, not in a, a field where we're gonna come back into a tillage situation. So uh, here's some of the wheat that, that had regrown and, and had died off here due to the shade. So anyways, there's some pretty cool stuff going on out here. But anyways, go ahead and, and make sure you you like the uh, video, if you would, share the video, subscribe to Cover Crop Kings, and we're gonna keep bringing you as many videos as we can from, from uh, now on. So we'll keep bringing them to you. Thank you, have a good day.